A couple months ago, a customer sent me this really nice 3D printed step pulley pattern. He needs one of these cast. It's got a really nice finish. Uh, here I'm using a center finder incorrectly, I know. Uh, it was the only tool I had on hand in order to establish the center of gravity on the back side of this. And this will allow me to put my pulling rod in there like a pendulum effect. And when I go to pull it from the sand, it will keep the plane of the sand and the plane of the pattern parallel to each other and not kick sideways. And here I decided I better go ahead and add some graphite just as a precautionary measure. Now, you, if you'll notice, I'm skipping my finest saving sand on this casting. There's no need for it because this is going to get machined on all surfaces. If you've seen my other videos, you know exactly step by step what I'm doing here. So there's no need for me to reiterate that tonight when I got some other things I was going to tell you about. Uh, two days ago, my sand muller quit on me. The spring that shoves force down on the compacting wheels that go in a circular rotation inside the drum, it had broken. This isn't the first time that's happened. It hasn't even been a year ago Keith Rucker and I put a brand new spring in the thing. So I needed to find out what was causing that. As I looked closer, I realized the plows that throw the sand from the inside out and from the outside in towards the wheels had severe wear that was creating a circular mound of sand that just happened to be up under the wheel. So what's happening is that mound of sand is solid. I mean, it's, it's not breaking up. It's, it's like concrete in there. So it's established. And now it's putting more sand in there in between it and the rolling wheels. So it's shoving more undue stress on that spring than it was designed for. So uh, I got the spring welded up. Then I went to town, got some mild steel flat bar, came back. I bent the flat bar to match the contour of the plows. And with the plows anchored in their position in the muller, I put some shim paper in the bottom and <clears throat> excuse me. And then I set the uh, pieces I made down on the shims and clamped them to the plows in place. Then from there, I'd remove each plow, bring it over, weld it, and then stick it back in there. Needless to say, it got me by uh, on the jobs I had to get done for that day. But I'm going to have to pull these out eventually, very soon and run a surfacing rod across that lead edge down there and harden that up because if I don't I'll be doing this all over again in a matter of months or less the way I've been running it lately. The parts on these things aren't cheap. I think I paid $75 for the spring plus $40 to ship it when it would have fit easily in a small flat rate shipping box. Maintenance seems to be half the work around here. If it's not my muller giving me fits, it's the furnace. Keep in mind, I'm dealing with extremely high temperatures here that are brutal on the furnace. Uh, the temperatures are so extreme, it steadily changes or mutates the furnace just about every time I use it. So I'm steadily patching, uh, using a jackhammer to it, uh, changing the air intake, changing the fuel mixture just to keep things running consistently and it's it's a little more than one man can do around here i have some good news though about a month ago a company up north mississippi called me and asked me if i could come up and visit them they're looking for a local foundry or in the state of mississippi anyway to supply their castings uh, these are going to be aluminum a356 so uh I went up there, talked to them, and I actually was very impressed. Uh, the only thing I do worry about is this is going to be high volume. Uh, and no, it's not going to stop me from casting my iron. I'm going to continue to do that down here. But I am going to 
change the process up a little bit for the non-ferrous end of it. The I've been giving die casting a lot of thought for several years, and it looks like I'm going to take the plunge and do that on this job. They're helping me with it. Uh, the owner of the company designated as process engineer to work with me and get the dies designed. Of course, you know, they're going to design their pattern and then they'll invert that design to the dies. So, and then we'll have to study the designs, decide how we want these to eject, etc. So, I'm kind of nervous, but at the same time excited about it. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I think I've... <sighs> I've I've read all I can read about die casting. No, I've never done it. And I understand until you've done it, you can't say you've done anything. But it's the same way with iron, right? Uh, and you can read all you want to about melting iron and pouring it, pouring quality iron. But until you've actually done it, you can't take credit for any of it. So it's a it's going to be a learning process for me. It's going to be a step that I got to take though. And Windy Hill Foundry will be able to say they do die casting. Most likely I won't be allowed to show you these castings for reasons like the non-disclosure agreement. I've had to deal with those before, so I'm, you know, I have to respect their privacy. But I will show you the stand that I'm building and uh, the way I'll be using the dies along with the furnace that I'm building just for this. It's going to be electric. It's going to be driven off a PID controller. Uh, it's going to be a little more state-of-the-art than what I've got for melting iron, but it should hold up a lot longer, and it's going to work kind of like a manipulator to where you uh, bring the furnace over on a swinging apparatus to the machine. Once I have enough of that built, I'll show you. I'm not going to be showing you schematics or anything. Nobody needs to try to follow what I'm doing. I'm scared somebody will get hurt. <laughs> According to Keith, I'm no licensed electrician. So take, take heed on that. The weather here got pretty bad this weekend. Uh, Hurricane Delta hit, but unfortunately the, our neighbors in Louisiana... They were the ones that caught the slack on that again. But uh, I didn't have any damage other than one shop light blew down out here under the awning. No tree limbs down, no trees down, thank goodness. We didn't have any rain beforehand. We did get some high gusts out of it, but like I said, nothing like Louisiana got. I've been through Katrina, and that was enough. I'll take a tornado any day to a hurricane. A tornado is hit and miss. It either gets you or it doesn't. Hurricane, it gets everybody. And Katrina, when it hit as far inland as we are from the coast, we still had Category 1 winds up here for 12 hours straight. And that's traumatizing when you're watching your roof and everything else blowing off. So I hope it's a long time, if never, that I go through that again. So it looks like we're about ready to put this mold together and pour some iron.
Well, the, the fire show that you saw earlier was due to these people's mold. And this guy had seen Cast Iron Gypsy's video on casting a skillet for their, uh, for their wedding. And uh, he decided he wanted to try that for his wife. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. He was trying to find where Windy Hill Foundry was, and he located it. And now, uh, Chad, tell us about this. Well, I saw the cast iron gypsy and she made the skillet for her wedding and I wanted to do one for mine and my wife's anniversary because I couldn't think of a good anniversary present. So I'm thinking that I'll incorporate a trip somewhere. So I, I figure out what I want. I want to make the skillet. So I get on Google search and I say, well, I've seen Windy Hill Foundry. Where's it at? Well, we live in Morton, Mississippi. I was expecting to go to Pennsylvania, Indiana, somewhere out of state. Windy Hill Foundry is three and a half miles from our house. So here we are. I'm Chad What's Strother. What's the odds of that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Chad Strother, and this is my wife, Stephanie. Hey. And uh, we've been over at Windy Hill Foundry, and we've uh, we've created a, a lasting memory. This is uh, a... Well, we'll go ahead and tell the truth here. This is a second <laughs> attempt. <laughs> And uh, I had some cold shut right here, so we're gonna try. We're gonna have to do this again. And I've explained. Don't get disappointed and down about it. Uh, that's just part of foundry work. Sometimes it takes multiple times before you can get uh, the casting right. But we're gonna get it right on the third time. And this one will turn it into a doorstop, uh, from what I understand. And and we'll we got enough here at least with the lettering in the face of the skillet to utilize it for something and my casting skills are getting better yeah you're learning a lot <laughs> but anyway i just wanted to uh share my neighbors behind the scene here say hello to my new neighbors <laughs> Okay, this is it. Turned out good. I didn't put the finest sieve on this mold. Uh, it's going to have all sides machined on it, so there was really no concern for finish on this. But anyway, fixing to get it in the mail and get the pattern put back in the box and get them sent back to the customer. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already to see all upcoming projects here at Windy Hill Foundry. Till the next time, have a good day.